Hi everyone. So it's been a while since I've done this. Um, go do a film review of the new Ridley Scott epic, The Last Duel. Now, uh, when I first saw this, um, I was a little puzzled because I thought, well, this is a medieval setting, but dueling went up to the 19th century. Um, but this is duel in a different context. This is about the medieval French practice of trial by combat. Um, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't seen the film, uh, then perhaps stop listening now. What I always do with these film reviews, I offer my perspective on the film, uh, and it's, I guess, pitching to people who've already seen it, perhaps to share thoughts. Um, perhaps some people agree with me or disagree with me. That's the purpose, rather than trying to, um, yeah, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. So, um, basically, to get to the gist of this film, uh, it's set in 1386, so late 14th century France. And it's involving basically three main characters. Um, the central character really is Margaret de Carouges. Um, Although actually she doesn't appear to about half an hour into the film. It's quite long. It's almost three hours. Uh, but I would say she probably is the main protagonist. Now the two men uh, who are the duelists in question, um, Jack Legree, uh, played by Adam Driver. I don't know if that's the Greeks. I uh, don't know if the French pronunciation is a silent S. And uh, Sir John de Carouges by Matt Damon. A lot of prosthetics on Matt Damon. He had a big scar on his face and a sort of mullet. Uh, but I actually think the look was very good. Um, my sister's into medieval history and I think the period costumes and all were very well done. Uh, there's a married scene, for example, where they show that a cloth is put over the hands which was actually the medieval custom, uh, giving rings apparently came later. Um, the Ridley Scott, of course, is known for historic epics like Gladiator, uh, Robin Hood. Um, and I, I was expecting some of that. Uh, the battle scenes, there are some battle scenes, are brutal, expectedly so. And... Um, excuse me, and I need to sneeze. <laughs> yeah. Um, I must admit, I'm not that familiar with Adam Driver or Jodie Comer. Matt Damon um, is probably the most established name in this film. Um, but I thought the performances were superb. Ben Affleck also makes an appearance as the kind of disreputable Count Pierre de Alencon. Now, basically, the point of this film is that in that society, uh, if two men have a feud and particularly in the nature of what this was about, then there was a judicial process known as trial by combat. And the argument would be that the winner, it would be a fight to the death, very brutal, um, and the winner would be deemed to be the rightful party because he has been favoured by God. Bear in mind, this was a devoutly religious society. Um, so the two characters, I'll start with the two men. Uh, so John de Carouges, Matt Damon, is seen as uh, he's a higher rank, he's a knight, he's a warrior, um, he's battle hardened, uh, he also has a quick temper. Um, Jack de Gre Le Greece, on the other hand, is a lower rank, he's a squire, but he's a squire who has a lot of perks with, uh, with the Count because they appear to be friends, that's uh, Ben Affleck's character. Um, there's a lot of sort of subplots about land and so on, but I think that's just developing the fact that these two guys, want friends, um, really have no love lost for one another. There's a growing mutual hostility there. And I think that the film delivers that very well. And an interesting take that the film has, uh, well, I should cut to the chase. Basically, at one point whilst um, Sir John the Carouges, Matt Damon, is going to Paris to appeal um, his... Uh, financial issues. Um, his bride, Margaret uh, Carouches, his wife, is basically raped by um, Adam Driver's character, um, Jack the Grease. Now, in the film, uh, and this is one thing that really comes through, they don't really make any effort to hide the fact that they see that as a truthful version. So even though this was an event that was over 600 years ago and there's absolutely no way to know for sure who is telling the truth. The direction of the film, the narrative of the film, very much is of the view that she she was telling the truth. Um, now, I'll come back to that because it's an important point. 
But the way the film handles that is they take each character and they show what happened through their perspective. So it starts off with uh, Karujas, then the Grace, and then uh, Lady Karujas, Marguerite uh, Karujas. And each perspective shows a different angle as to what exactly happened. Um, and you end up actually looking at the film most sympathetic to Lady Marguerite. Um, and the way it's done, it's very much like, you know, I, I saw a review of this film, that I think it was in the um, Telegraph or the Times, I can't remember, but it said that one almost gets the impression that this is trying to deliver a Me Too message. Now, I must admit, when I saw the trailer, I thought, well, is this going to be a little bit preachy? Dare I say, is it going to be a bit woke? You know, is it going to deliver this kind of feminist message of all the men are bastards and that's it? Well, I would say the film's a bit more subtle than that. Yes, it's biased. Yes, it definitely implies that one party is telling the truth, um, which is basically, I mean, they, they do the truth according to the truth according to, and then when it comes to Lady Marguerite, the truth according to, but they leave the truth kind of highlighted, like that is the truth. And I thought that was uh, kind of obvious. Okay, well, they're laying the cards on the table there. That is, that's where they lie. Nevertheless, it's done in such a way that you, you can see why there would be subtleties in that society, not by today's standards, but in that society. And, I think that this film delivered in so far as it brought through a message of the difficulties the women were in in that sort of dynamic. Because we often see that, uh, you know, this idea of medieval chivalry, knights fighting over a lady, it's sort of romantic. But what this film done was kind of bring the raw reality home, which is, yes, these men were risking their lives, but at the same time, and this is an angle... Uh, that certainly sheds another light on it. Had she been found to have borne false witness, she would have been burned at the stake. And in the final scene, when she's watching the duel, I won't say who prevails in the duel, but when she's watching it, she's actually got shackles on her legs as if almost, uh, if the carouge is lost, that would mean that she was bearing false witness, she would be burned. Um, if the grace lost, then she would be vindicated by God. I won't say what happened. But... Um, it was that that scene, the final fight scene was very epic, very well done. Uh, the period costume was very, um, I thought, accurate. Um, what else can I say about this film? Um, there was another thought that uh, came to mind. People have criticised one aspect of it, which was the rape scene itself. Um, it was depicted in two ways, from the point of view of the Greeks and the point of view of uh, Lady Marguerite. Now, in Lady Marguerite's perspective, it was particularly brutal, and there's no getting around that. So, for anyone who has been a rape survivor, I would strongly recommend that they don't see this film, or even someone who has survived sexual abuse, because it is quite graphic, and it doesn't really leave much to the imagination. So I would say, be cautious about that. And I think there probably should be a disclaimer at the start of the film, the film depicts a rape scene, something like that, uh, which wasn't there. That probably should be there um, because it is quite a brutal scene. Um, you know, it's always difficult to depict the rape scene, but I would gently suggest to people who say that was too much, they shouldn't have had that. Had they taken that out and had they just implied it, I don't think it would have delivered what the film was trying to do, which was to show uh, Lady Marguerite's perspective. I think had they just implied it, we wouldn't know um, her angle. We wouldn't know. We would say maybe she'd be depressed and she'd be down, trodden uh, in, her, in her temperament, but we wouldn't. I, I don't know if the film could have simply implied that and delivered in the same way. So yes, it is an uncomfortable scene. I mean, as a guy, I'm watching that and thinking, damn, that's, you know, it's not an easy scene to watch. I would gently suggest to people who are saying it shouldn't be there, I think the way to handle something like that is to put a disclaimer. But I don't think that that could have been censored and the film could have been delivered in the same way. I really don't. If you see the film and you see the fact that it showed these three different angles, I don't think you could have censored that scene. It's an uncomfortable scene. 
it's a shocking scene, but I think it's an important scene. Um, anyway, uh, the film's getting mixed reviews. It's not doing very well at the box office. Um, rise people there will be rape survivors who find that aspect too much and they might feel that it's, it's almost exploiting the issue i don't believe it is actually i would respectfully suggest it's not doing that and i would suggest that people who have been through that experience don't see this film uh but i do think it's important at what it delivers uh so there's that side then there will be some people who think it's kind of a little bit of hollywood politicking uh, and it is interesting that both Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are in the film. They both were heavily criticised during the Me Too campaign for not criticising predatory men strongly enough, which frankly I think was a little bit of hyperbole. I think, I feel that Me Too did go too far in the way it, you know, spoke about believing all women and so on. Um, so one does wonder, is this kind of Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, I believe they're executive producers, a Ridley Scott film, but I believe they were involved in the production. Are they kind of vindicating themselves? One does wonder. One does wonder. But you know, what's interesting about this film is there is those overtones that it's kind of delivering a made to narrative. But I don't think it's overwhelming, and I don't. I don't see this as a twenty first century film trying to judge medieval society. I feel this is showing simply showing medieval society i don't believe this is bringing in 21st century standards um obviously it's down to historians to talk about the accuracy of it um but i really don't believe it was doing that i mean i, I did think that was one hesitation i had is this just going to be a cut sort of lecture uh but it wasn't i i really don't think it was um i think it was an intelligent film i personally think it's a lot better than robin hood because for me, Robin Hood, I'm talking about the Ridley Scott version, just lacked something, uh, particularly compared to the 1991 Kevin Costner, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It just lacked heart. There was something about that film that the action was good, but it, it just felt kind of dragged out. And it sort of felt, um, I personally, and people might disagree with this, I personally think Russell Crowe's a bit overrated as an actor. I don't think he has the biggest depth as an actor because I think he he's very good at playing tough guys but I think honestly uh I mean take Gladiator for example I really think Joaquin Phoenix was a much stronger actor in that film everyone knows that famous line uh you know are you not entertained but frankly dare I say it, I think some of Russell Crowe's delivery is a little bit wooden I think he is slightly overrated um but anyway, I digress. I, I just think Robin Hood was missing something. Um, so anyway, check it out. Um, it's limited release at the moment. It's only got one other showing in my cinema. But Ridley Scott also, I was talking to my friend about this earlier, he might be the most famous person from North East England. I don't know. He was uh, born in South Shields, probably lived in Hollywood for years, but you know, kind of proud that it's one of her own. Um but yeah, I, I think The Last Jewel was a powerful film. Um, I, I give it about 8 out of 10. I really do. It's not without flaws. Perhaps the main thing is it doesn't really hide its bias and it implies truth when it cannot know that for sure. It just can't. Ridley Scott, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, they, they, they cannot say for a fact that, you know, um, Lady Marguerite was telling the truth or... Um, the Grace wasn't, so, you know, they, they don't know that for a fact, but that's Hollywood for you. Anyway, check it out if you get a chance. The last jewel.